this exact thing. وترى الأرض هامدة. Exactly. فإذا أنزلنا عليها الماء أهتزت وربت. إن الذي أحياها لمحي الموتى. إنه على كل شيء قدير. You see the earth dry. Then when we send down rain water over it, it क्या कहते हैं इहतज़त वरबत लहलहा रही है सब्ज़े से it flourishes and it it grows up and rises up huge crops grow over it indeed that being who brought to life will bring the dead back to life as well इन्ह हु अल्लाह कुल शेइन कदीर he is potent over everything in other place in सूरत हामिम सज़दा अल्लाह used the same words وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنَّكَ تَرَى الْأَرْضَ خَاشِعَةً فَإِذَا أَنْزَلْنَا عَلَيْهَا الْمَاءَ أَهْتَزَّتْ وَرَبَتْ وَهَبِي إِذَا زَيْنَ إِنَّ الَّذِي أَحْيَاهَا لَمُحْيِ الْمَوْتَى إِنَّهُ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this a sign. Allah could have worked in other ways. Why did Allah make this system? So that we can see it every year. That in this way, that like this life there is being breathed into this dry land, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will breathe that life into the dead as well. That seed which you sow in the earth, and then vegetable grows over it, rice or grain or whatever. Similarly, the dead bones in the earth which are there, Allah will put the soul in there and the dead man will come up. In the same way as that seed roots and you get crops from it, the dead man will grow. Allah only has to breathe the life in their soul and the soul and the body will all be gathered together and he will be brought back to life. Ibrahim alayhi salam yaad aate hai. Ibrahim alayhi salam asked Allah, Gai Rabbi alini kaifa tuhi al mawta? Oh Allah show me, how are you going to bring the dead back to life? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first question Ibrahim. Ibrahim, how long to me? Do you not believe in life after? Of course I believe. No, 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 no. My question is not that are you going to bring the dead back to life? My question is how are you going to do it? The kaifiyat. I'm just curious. Through this curiosity, I want to see it with my own eyes. I want to experience it. I want to get that aynul yaqeen, haqqul yaqeen. So Allah said, okay, Ibrahim, you are my khalil, my friend, so I will show you how I bring back to life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَخُذْ أَرْبَعَةً مِّنَ الطَّيِّرِ فَصُرْهُنَّ إِلَيْكَ ثُمَّ جَعَلْ عَلَى كُلِّ جَبَلٍ مِّنْهُنَّ جُزْءًا ثُمَّ دْعُهُنَّ يَأْتِينَكَ سَعْيًا وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ Take four birds and tame them so that they become your friends and then slaughter them one by one and take their heads one place, their feathers another place, their bones another place, their legs in another place and then stand between them and call them one by one. No. All the pieces will join together and they will come running to you. Not flying, otherwise you might think another new bird has come. They will come running to you on the ground so you can realize that it is the same bird which was tamed and it will be friend with you again and it will be like that tame bird. It will be, you will realize that it is the same bird. No. Exactly the same manner Allah has joined it and brought it back to life and that's what happened. It won maybe one pigeon, one peacock, one chicken, and one another bird, and he tamed them, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed him, and Allah said, Wa'alam anna Allah Aziz and Hakim. Should know that Allah has full power over everything, and He is Hakim. Through His Hikmat and Wisdom, He does whatever He wills. So, Wa'ayatullahumul Ardul Maita. Ahyayinaha, we bring that dead and barren land back to life. Wa'akhrajna minhu habban, and from it, we bring out grains from which people eat. Inna Allah faliqul habbi wa nawa. Allah, kya kehte hain? Phoorte hain? Phoorte hain. Allah splits. Jazakallah. Allah splits the hab, the grain, and one nawa, the date stone, gutli. Allah dhane ko bhi phoorte hain, gutli ko bhi phoorte hain. The grain and the date stones. Yukhrijul hayya min al-mayyit, wa mukhrijul mayyit min al-hayy brings the living from the dead and the dead from the living. Or chicken from the egg and egg from the chicken. He brings them both. Who is first, chicken or egg? So the answer was, يُخْرِجُ الْحَيَّ مِنَ الْمَيِّدِ وَمُخْرِجُ الْمَيِّدِ مِنَ الْحَيِّ He takes out the life from the dead. So that means egg was first. And from that egg, chicken came out. And from that chicken, egg. And from that egg, chicken. So then the continuous chain started. The ayat indicating over here is that egg was first and chicken was brought out from it. 
يخرج الحي من الميت ومخرج الميت من الحي ذلكم الله فأنا تؤفكون فالق الإصباح وجعل الليل سكرا والشمس والقمر حسبانا ذلك تقدير العزيز العليم ثم أخرجنا منها حبا فمنه يأكل from which people eat وجعلنا فيها جنات من نخيل وأعناب and we have made in it gardens uh, or orchards of date palms and grapes meaning not just hub and grains not just rice wheat uh, barley corn vegetables but also fruits and we have made fruits in it as well we need vegetables and fruits we need both to survive we can't just survive on fruit we can't just survive on vegetables so Allah made both things for us and uh, uh, Allah mentioned these two because these two were most popular within that area where Quran is being revealed and Allah has made uh, the earth into you know various types and various fruits come out from some areas only dates grow like in Medina Munawara and there are other areas from where only grapes grow and no dates like in our Kabul area uh, with, with the Afghanistan area it's a very very uh, fertilized area and you get beautiful fruits over there but you won't get any dates in May, uh, which are produced in Afghanistan but you will get the other fruits like beautiful grapes and uh, other fruits so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made every land in a different way in those areas these fruits used to be taken over there of nakhil and anab so Allah mentioned uh, we have placed orchards of dates and grapes and wafajarna fiha min al uyun and we have caused springs to gush forth from there springs come out and you see out of uh, mountains from between rocks and stones the water is flowing all the time and then rivers and then huge waterfalls where is that water all coming out from? Allah is bringing that water Allah gushes that water and uh, causes it to flow from uh, those places wherever it is flowing from so we have brought out that spring water so that people could eat from its fruits the fruits that come out and even though their hands have not made it this fruit was not made by your hands you have to go through that procedure system which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has predestined for you you can make GM crops but even that you have to put place it in the soil and create it from there you can make different shapes of bananas like in Japan rather than round bananas they make straight bananas and rather than round watermelons, they make square watermelons. And in some places you get, rather than red watermelons, it comes out yellow from inside. So you can mess around with that, create things in there, change the colors or sizes or features, but you can't produce it yourself. It has to go through that system which Allah has made. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made those fruits for you, even though your hands did not make them, Afala yashkurun, do you not do shukr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, show your gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created for you. This is one tafsir of wama amilatu aydihim. Ibn Kasir writes, Yani wama dhalika kulluhu illa min rahmatillahi ta'ala bihim, la bi sa'ihim, wala bi kaddihim, wala bi hawlihim wa quwwati. Everything is a mercy and rahmat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should humble ourselves when we see all that fruit before us, when we pass by a, a you know, green grocer's shop, a fruit seller, and we see all that fruit, we should look at it and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Beautiful oranges, apples, bananas, plums, berries, cherries, and whatever we get over there in every season. And in England, alhamdulillah, we get you know, fruits all the time, all season, mangoes and all this. And these oranges and bananas and apples, we get it all the time, 12 months of the year. Even though we don't produce that, but we get it from different countries, from the Caribbean, from South, from North, from South Africa, from other places. Allah brings everything over here for us. And, you know, uh, uh, this is, we never made it, Allah made it for us. Number two, another tafsir narrated by Ibn Jarir is that وَمَا عَمِلَتْهُ أَيْدِيهِمْ مَا is not for nafi and negation, مَا is mausula. And it means لِيَأْكُلُوا ثَمَرِهِ وَمِنَ الَّذِي عَمِلَتْهُ أَيْدِيهِمْ they should, they, That they should, they could eat from the fruits and from that which they make with those fruits. Which they make with their fruits. Like fruit dessert, fruit chart, 
you put some you know uh, syrup in it, little bit of zero me too on it, and then you you know present it as a dessert to the guests. Guests. So you make different varieties out of that fruit, dry fruit. And you use that dry fruit for many reasons, prunes, dates, dry dates. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I produce the fruit. From those fruits, you make many, many other things to delicious delicacies for yourselves. So you can eat from those fruits and the various delicacies which you make uh, for yourselves. And uh, Ibn Kasir writes that this is in the Qirat of Ibn Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, لِيَأْكُلُوا مِنْ ثَمَرِهِ وَمِمَّا عَمِلَتْهُ أَيْدِيهِمْ so mimma means ma is mausula and from whatever their hands make for themselves and of uh, 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 Allah is inviting us to show our shukr and gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then Allah said subhanalladhi khalaqal azwaj kullaha mimma tummitu al-ardu pure and hallowed is that being who created every pair from that which the earth grows and from among themselves and other things about which they have no knowledge Allah created pairs from everything. Azwaj means pairs, double. Allah created double in everything. Um, you get, for example, in apples, red apples, green apples, pairs, different types of pairs, conference pairs, these pairs, and oranges, you get oranges, satsumas, and uh, these types of things. Allah is trying to maybe, some of us see translate with this as pears, others say that it means variety, variety of fruits, variety, large in size, small in size, difference in sweetness, some are sweet, some are sour, some are different types, in vegetables you get different vegetables, some are long like cucumbers, some are green, some are red like carrots and other colors, so Allah created all these different varieties of vegetables and fruits and grains and all these for you so that you can live on this earth peacefully, eat and drink and you know, uh, uh, be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah created pears in everything from which the earth grows. Now over here those who translate pears, Dr. Sab will remind me that in plants also you get male and female. Yeah. And the plants, the male plants are attracted towards the female plants. And when they are both together, they flourish and they grow properly. But if there is only male plants or only female plants, then they after some time shrink and die down. In the, in the Khajurs, dates, there are males and females. We, last time we were in Medina Munawara, we wanted this Bagh and you know Khajuri and date uh, orchard. And the, 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 the people who were working there, you know, they, they showed us around. And a huge Bagh. And they said that in this bar and orchard there are oh, maybe 120 150 so many trees of, of khajurs and from them this area these 10 15 trees are male and the rest are females how do you realize he said we through our expertise we know this is male and that is female so in the olden days what they used to do was they had to climb on the male trees and when in the beginning when the uh, uh, it, uh, when the when the fruits uh, the khajur dates are, are starting to grow and their bunch is starting to form up it's white and then it takes color of, of green and then it takes the color of yellow and then it turns into dark yellow and then black so when it's in the early stages they used to take it cut it and fill their bags with it come down climb on the other tree and these small small like you know flower like small bunches which they had uh, cut they have to tie it with those female bunches so they tie it on those female well, a few here a few there a few there and then the fruit grows really nicely this was called as ta'bir and talqih so in those olden days they had to go through really hard time but the man showed us that now today we have cranes. So on the crane, we go around with the crane, cut from here and take the crane over there. And on that same crane, we tie it up over there. In those days, they had to water the plants and the orchard with, you know, manually. With uh, taking a well or drawing out from the well. Today they have pumps, they have to just put the switch on. Automatically there's pipeline and in the every whole area in the orchard there's pipeline and the water goes to every tree and they have uh, less work to do. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that we have created pears, male, female, in fruits and in vegetables as well. The scientists discovered this now and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told this uh, 1400 years ago in the Quran that there are pears in everything which Allah has created. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create pear in everything? To show that the one and only haqiqi one is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything else will have pears 
varieties, double, triple, quadruple, and 10, 15 different types, varieties. They will have all other males, females. It's one and only Allah who has no partner, who has no son, who has no one resembling him. So we believe in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not associate anything unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not bow down before anyone besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the only one who is worthy of your worship, of your bowing down, of your prostration and sajda. You should worship Allah alone. Remember him alone, invoke him alone, show your gratitude and thanks to him alone. This is the message Allah is giving here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, hallowed be that being, glorify him. Every time you go in ruku, say subhana rabbi al-azim. You go in sadda, say subhana rabbi al-ala. Glorify him in the morning, subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah al-azim, subhanallah wa alhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar, subhanallah wa bihamdihi, adada khalqihi, wa rida nafsihi, wa zinata arshihi, wa midada kalimatihi, allati la tanfad. Read these tasbihat and glorify him. This is Allah is saying, subhanallahi khalaqal azwaj kullaha, mimma tumbitu al-ardu, wa min anfusihim. From them as well, Allah created pairs, from human beings, from ourselves, Allah created male and female. If he wished, he could have, uh, you know, made another way. But this is how Allah wanted our life to be. So Allah created pairs among us as well. And from those about which they have no knowledge. What is Allah referring to? Allah is saying there are plenty of other creations upon the earth, within the ocean, and upon the heavens and skies, among which you have pairs and varieties and different uh, categories, which you don't know. There are many, many species which are, uh, you know, discovered daily. We don't know about all those species. Mm -hmm. you, you watch the blue planet and you see how many species and fishes Allah has made in the ocean. And you know, this is not, they have not covered everything. This is only a fraction of the creation which Allah has made over there in the sea. And upon the earth, you you know, the, the earth planet, you see, you know, uh, polar bears and uh, uh, other uh, cheetahs and lions and how they work and, you know, zebras and the jungle and whatever the makhluqat. Allah has made all these, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, birds and flies and creations, animals, wild beasts. Allah said, there are many, many other things which you don't even know yet which Allah has made uh, on the earth, on the land. Allah has made this universe. So believe in Him. This is the first sign which Allah mentioned. Wa ayatul lahum. Uh, the, uh, the land and whatever Allah has made within the land with regards to uh, you know vegetables, fruits and pears or, uh, among everything and the water uh, which gushes out and even yourself which Allah has created. So all these are creations which Allah has placed on the earth for you. Then Allah moves on. And a sign for them is the night. We draw the day out of it, then suddenly they are left in darkness. What the Sorry. And the sun travels towards its destination without straying from its course. This is the perfect arrangement of the mighty. All knowing. And the moon, we have stipulated for it stations. It goes around in those stations until it turns like a branch of an old date palm. It is not possible for the sun to catch and overtake the moon, nor is it possible for the night to precede the day. They are all swimming within their orbits. This is another sign of the power of Allah which Allah is mentioning. A sign for them is the night, the darkness of the night. Why Allah made the darkness of the night? وَجَعَلْنَا اللَّيْلَ لِبَاسًا وَجَعَلْنَا النَّهَارَ مَعَاشًا وَبَنَيْنَا فَوْقَكُمْ سَبْعًا شِدَادًا وَجَعَلْنَا نَوْمَكُمْ سُبَاتًا 
you can sleep at night and rest, relax. Get rid of all that fatigue and tiredness which came upon your body during the day. For that reason we made the night for you. Allah is Allah, Allah is merciful. If Allah did not make the night for us and there was light all the time, then there would be people working 24 hours a day. Money, 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 money. Everybody after money, money. They wouldn't want to go to sleep. Even the night is there, still people work two shifts, three shifts, four shifts, morning shift, afternoon shift, evening shift, night shift. So people are after money, money, needlessly hoarding it more than what they need. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the night. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in, 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 in the 20th Jews, Say, if Allah made the night all the time, then who, which God is there besides Allah who can bring for you the day in which you can go out and seek your sustenance and life deal? And who, uh, in which, sorry, in which you can gain light and riya? Do you not understand? Do you not listen? And if Allah placed the day all the time, 24 hours, until the day of Qiyamah, then which God is there besides Allah who could bring for you night in which you can get sukoon and rest and peace? Afalatum sirun and wamir rahmatihi. Due to his mercy, ja'ala lakumul layla wal nahar, day and night for you, walitaskunu fi, walitabdahu min fadlihi, walallakum tashkun. In one you can get sukoon, in the other you seek for your sustenance. And do, will you not be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? وَجَعَلْنَا اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ آيَتَيْنِ فَمَحَوْنَا آيَةَ اللَّيْلِ وَجَعَلْنَا آيَةَ النَّهَارِ مُبْسِرَةً لِتَبْتَغُوا مِنْ فَضْلِهِ What is the first one? وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ نَا يَتَلْ يَمْدُ مَعْدِدِي وَجَعَلْنَا اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ آيَتَيْنِ فَمَحَوْنَا آيَةَ اللَّيْلِ وَجَعَلْنَا آيَةَ النَّهَارِ مُبْسِرَةً وَلِتَعْلَمُوا عَدَدَ السِّنِينَ وَالْحِسَابِ وَكُلَّ شَيْءٍ فَصَّلْنَاهُ تَفْصِيلًا We made this night and day so that for these reasons and so that you can work out the Jazakallah, work out the times of day and night and the hisab and the, uh, and the dates and how many days have passed, how your timings have taken place and the years, you can count the years through the night and day وَكُلَّ شَيْءٍ فَصَّلْنَاهُ تَفْصِيلًا and we have uh, clarified everything in details. So Allah said, a sign for you is the night and the darkness of the night which Allah made for you. نَسْلَخُ مِنْهُ nahar. We draw out and take away the day out of it. سَلَخَ يَسْلُخُ سَلْخًا literally means skinning the animal. So you slaughter a or a goat and then you skin it. So when you peel that skin off, this is called سَلَخَ يَسْلُخُ سَلْخًا I remember the hadith over here of Ibn Majah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed by this sahabi who had just slaughtered one goat and he was trying to take the skin off. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw that this person is struggling. So he said, oh bhai, do you not know how to skin the goat? Move. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rolled his sleeve and he, 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 he took this part of the skin from the top of where the neck was he put his hand inside and he pulled it and said, this is how you skin the goat. So Rasulullah sallallahu told them everything. Salakh yasulukhu. In fact, you know, I remember another hadith which is not related to salakh but with regards to zibah, slaughter. One sahabi said to Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, sometimes I need to eat meat and for my family so I have to slaughter the goat. I take the goat but I feel pity for that good. I have mercy and rahmat upon that good. 
I don't want to slaughter it. But because I have to feed my children, I have to slaughter it. So Rasulullah said, Inna fi laka fi dhalika la ajra. You will get ajra and sawab for that mercy you show to that goat. Allah Akbar. That means when we slaughter an animal, it should be with the name of Allah, fulfilling the right of that animal as well, thinking that yes, if the animal is an animal, it's a creation of Allah. And you know when you say Bismillahi Allahu Akbar, the, this is a soothing effect for the animal as well. And there is effect in that Bismillahi Allahu Akbar, in those wordings. So that is why we have to say Bismillahi Allahu Akbar. So the, it can, the, the animal can be at peace as well when it's being slaughtered. This is the, uh, what you call, uh, <coughs> instruction which is given in the hadith. And this is why when sometimes we see on YouTube, you know, the manner of slaughtering, like, you know, if you go on YouTube and you see uh, slaughtering a camel, now you will see some people who are at the camel and they're oh, oh, clapping, joyishing and making noise. And then that, uh, you know, the animal, the poor animal's feet are being uh, tied up and then it's being slaughtered and the animal is, you know, screaming and the people are, you know, laughing and making. This is not the right way. You should show pity on that animal while you are slaughtering it. And this is the, what we have been taught. Uh, however, with regards to that, you know, current and shot, Sharia does not allow that. Because it prolongs the death of the animal. When you slaughter it in the normal circumstances, the blood gushes out and comes with full force. And the animal dies quickly. But if you stun it, and uh, then it, 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 it does not realize what's going on because it, it, it's uh, subconscious. And the blood does not come out quickly. So the death is prolonged. It dies very slowly. So you are giving it more pain by stunning the animal. So there is less pain in killing and slaughtering without giving it the pain. So but anyway, this is with regards to salakh yasluhu and the literal meaning of salakh. So, naslakhu min un nahar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, just imagine when that sun is setting, as though Allah is taking that skin of the light away from the day. Mm. And suddenly, uh, darkness falls and everything goes dark. And you don't know where you are turning to. Especially where there are no street lights, you get scared of walking over there. You need street lights to go in that light. Allah causes the darkness to come upon you. And this is a sign that Allah's power, Allah has made uh, this dunya in such a manner. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَالشَّمْسُ تَجْرِي لِمُسْتَقَرْنَا As for the sun, then it travels towards its destination. Allah has fixed his destination. This is the destination which the sun has to travel to. And Allah said, this is the arrangement of the Almighty, the All-Knowing. Now, we will do tafsir of this Tajreel Mustaqar Lillaha next week, inshallah. There is some detail in there. And also, the Al-Qamar Qaddarnahu as well. We will go into that next week, inshallah.